I love finding new ways to use the textured and decorative papers that I make all the time. And I also love making sketchbooks, especially mini ones. So I had this idea to create a really small textured paper sketchbook. It's a little bit of a spin-off of the mixed media collage sketchbook that I share in one of my Skillshare classes that I learned from Heinrich, Heinrich Dreischer. But this one is instead of collaging the decorative papers onto a solid sheet of paper, this is just the decorative papers. So I started by eyeballing out a squarish shape that I liked and a size that felt good. And then I'm using that as a template as I cut up more of my decorative papers and textured papers to create multiple pages for this mini decorative paper sketchbook. The cool thing about this idea is that the book can exist as its own and just be the decorative papers on the pages and you can leave, let it be and just kind of be a fun way to have those become a book. But you could also use them as mini inspiration and jumping off point for further art exploration and mixed media play, which is probably what I'm going to do down the road. So I've cut up all of the decorative papers that I want into the same size squares and then I'm going to go ahead and set up my area for gluing. I've just randomly shuffled them up so that they're, you know, in a different arrangement. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue them back to back. So that way, as I flip through my book, each of my pages has a decorative paper on it. And for the glue on this one, I decided just to go ahead and use a glue stick. I figured that it would give me enough adhesion since I was just doing paper to paper without any fancy collaging at this point. So I'm just putting a nice, good, healthy layer of glue stick glue and then attaching each square to the, the backs together to form the different sketchbook pages. And then I'm also using a little bit of weight as I stack them up just to ensure that they really adhere well to each other because I'm not using a very intense glue. I want to make sure that I used gravity just to kind of help ensure that everything got stuck together all right. And then I kind of flip through just to kind of see how it's looking. There's really no plan for this other than, you know, kind of letting the randomness happen. I did decide to do some um, binder clips. Well, I want to glue the spine together. So I binder, I put binder clips on either end and then I just decided to add a piece of washi tape as well to it to um, just kind of hold the, the binding together. And then I used the my white PVA glue, which you could use any liquid glue, to glue along the binding. And then I let that dry overnight because I had the time to do that. And now I'm just kind of opening the book back up and releasing anywhere where the edges might have gotten stuck together in from the glue seeping further in than the binding. Now I want to add decorative paper for a cover. So I'm digging through my pile and kind of searching for one that I like and you really can do anything. You could even just use you know color paper if you have any on hand, whatever you want to do. But I found this really beautiful piece of watercolor textured and ink paper that I had played with years ago. So I've decided to trim off the edges and use part of that to create my decorative cover. So I could measure it, but I really like just eyeballing things. So I'm figuring out how tall I need it and kind of how wide. And then I'm going to do it a little longer than I need it to be because that ensures that it's going to get a full coverage and then I can trim it down to size. So without using a ruler, I'm just kind of using the book itself to measure how wide, like how tall I need my paper to be. And I'm going to go ahead and trim that up. And then I'm just kind of putting the book body inside of it and doing a little bit of squishing and squinching to kind of define the binding edge a little bit just to ensure that the inside lays down inside of it nicely as it start as I start to mold the outside paper to the sketchbook body shape. And then I could get out my bone folder, but this is just kind of a fun, loose bookmaking experience. So I didn't worry about getting out any special tools and you don't need them. So now once I have everything kind of defined as far as where my binding is going to be, I'm going to go ahead and get out my PVA glue and my paintbrush and I'm going to start with the binding and then work my way out from there. I find I really like having the glue over the entire cover surface just to ensure that it really adheres nicely. 
especially since a book is meant to be opened and used and repeatedly moved, I want it to be as secured to the outer edges of my sketchbook body pages as possible. So then I lay down the center first for the binding and then I squish up and up from the binding to the outer edges on both and then do a little burnishing on my tabletop as well as with my fingers to ensure that it is gluing and adhering well to all sections of the sketchbook, front and back. I'm using my hands to burnish and smooth just to make sure everything is attached nicely. And then I seem to have forgot that I already had binder clips out, so I dug around for another one and put that on the binding edge of my sketchbook to really hold the binding in place because that's the most important part that needs to remain glued and to really adhere well during the drying process. So then at this point, I can go ahead and trim off the excess decorative paper from my cover paper and just make sure everything looks how I want it to. And then I like to burnish it a couple more times and then usually put another weight on top to get that covered to adhere. And here is my finished product. I love it. I can't wait to work back into it. Till next time.